matters is me. I'm the only one that matters. Thanks, Donnie. You're the worst. You know, I um, I, I don't know whether my I know my mic was switched on. But I don't know whether, whether I was actually communicating at the time when I said, in answer to Kevin's question, why, why, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why, oh, why, are we still obsessed with a blooming royal family? Might it be because it has been uh, engaged in one of the world's longest running and most successful public relations campaigns, aided and abetted by the willing sinners of the British press? Oh, I better got that right. Yes. It's a blooming soap opera. Obsessed we are. I bet that Zora Suleiman doesn't uh, last the evening. She sounds like she has a, uh, a cold. It's, there's a lot of it about. In fact, I'll bet five pounds. Who wants to take that bet? And the reason for that is that Britain is uh, now in the grip of uh, winter. Blooming freezing outside. A wintry weekend is uh, forecast as temperatures drop to minus three. <laughs> now you double it and add 32 to get to Fahrenheit. So double minus three is, um, double minus three is, um, well, you can't get double minus anything. So it's impossible to figure out. And I think you'll find that that is correct. There's going to be snow. Oh, no. Oh, snow. Winter conditions are going to arrive in earnest tonight as temperatures are fall below freezing. Two inches of snow will be dumped on some parts. <laughs> dumped? Can you dump snow? I thought that the snow fell gracefully. It doesn't get dumped. The Met Office has issued a yellow warning for ice in parts of the UK tonight. Warning! Warning! Don't suck on the yellow ice. And Public Health England, Public Health England has uh, told people to take precautions as temperatures look set to drop. <laughs> hey, what would we do without them, eh? Precautions, you say? Wow, that advice is worth every penny we spend on a minute. The Met Office said a band of rain, sleet and snow showers is going to... Well, I mean, pick one. Which is it? Rain, sleet and snow? Plus, it also could be uh, sunny and warm. We've got no idea. Where the Met Office? Rain, sleet and snow showers are going to move uh, from the northwest to the southeast across the yellow area. It will be followed by a further, a winter, a further wintry showers on uh, Saturday. So uh, wrap up warm, hat, coat, scarf and gloves. They said icy patches are, li are likely to form on untreated surfaces as temperatures fall. I bet there are untreated surfaces near, near where you live because, as usual, councils are completely uh, befuddled and uh, bewitched by the uh, falling of temperatures in winter. They never expect it. It always comes as a complete surprise. Public Health England's Extreme Events Team said... <laughs> I'm not making it up. There actually is one. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Hey, what do you do for a living? I'm in the extreme events team. Uh, they said we're well used to winter in this country, so most people know what to do to protect their health before and during cold spells. Yes, what they mostly do is wear very flimsy clothes and then catch a cold as though they've never experienced a winter before and spend the entire commute coughing their face off all over everyone else in the bus or the train they're on. That's what people do. Morons. We're surrounded by morons. So spread the stupid around, don't keep it to yourself. Eh. Winter is here. Should we deal with, deal with the budget really quickly? No. <laughs> it, was, um, it was just a lot of nothing. What was the point? Not one single thing would make the slightest bit of difference to anyone's life. Shall I go through the salient points? Stamp duty. What a lot of nothing that was. From uh, this moment, the government has abolished stamp duty for all first-time buyers for homes worth up to £300,000. Which won't make the slightest bit of difference. It's the price of the house, not the tiny amount of tax on it that's stopping people getting on the housing ladder. Stamp duty. It's like five grand on 500,000. That's what people would uh, go to Ikea and spend on um, a new kitchen. It's going to make the slightest bit of difference to people's ability to buy a house. 
What would make a difference is if we uh, build a vast number of houses, which we're not. It's another one of these I'm gonna's. By the mid 2020s, there should be 300,000 homes being built every year. Now, as the uh, current government is vanishingly unlikely to be still in power in the mid 2020s, we can assume that that's not going to happen. And councils, are you, that, that sound you hear? That's councils digging their heels in, saying, not round here you won't. Not in my backyard. There's a, there's a piece of grass over there. You can't build within 100 miles. Um, the uh, Chancellor uh, also announced plans to allow councils to charge 100% premium on council tax on empty properties. Oh, <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> oh, that's really going to um, uh, 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 hit the uh, super rich in their pockets. 100% premium on a council tax, so it's another grand a year. See, the problem is that uh, properties are being bought offshore by the super rich who just want to park their money in property in a safe place. London. Another thousand pounds a year is nothing to them. That's that's what they spend on lunch. Plastic. The government wants to investigate how the tax system and charges on single-use plastic items can reduce waste, which is akin to saying nothing at all. It's another I'm gonna. They're gonna investigate it. From next April, diesel cars who don't meet air quality standards, as in all of them, will be hit by an additional tax. But get this, no white van man and no white van women, woman will be hit by the measures, the Chancellor says. So, in other words, what's the point of that? It's meaningless. To exclude vans from the diesel tax makes it meaningless. Oh, and uh, the other uh, big uh, news there, fuel duty has been uh, frozen for the eighth year in a row. Saving the driver £160 a year, says the government. And you know what? If <laughs> fuel duty is frozen, it makes it sound as though uh, they're doing us a favour. 60% of the price of our fuel is tax. Freezing it's neither here nor there. They're going to uh, give uh, £600 to colleges for every, every extra pupil who decides to take a maths A-level. And that £600 will be delivered straight into the Chancellor's pocket. Because apparently they're worth it. Every extra people who takes a, a maths A level is going to bring their college six hundred pounds. Those kids will be getting those skills just in time to be replaced by a calculator. Correct. And the national living wage. <laughs> the national living wage is going to go up from seven pound fifty an hour to seven pound eighty three. <laughs> Don't spend it all in the same place. A whole thirty three p an extra. Uh, extra per hour. Wow. What will you do with all that luxury? Alcohol. Hammond announced that he's going to increase tax on low-quality alcoholic drinks, but duties on other alcoholic drinks will be frozen. Shall we go ahead and assume that the Chancellor and his friends do not drink low-quality alcohol? Uh, the NHS... Well, there's lots to talk about the NHS. He said he's going to give uh, the NHS uh, £2.8 billion pounds, uh, extra, which probably isn't extra at all. It's uh, mu Much of it is made up with money that we're going to get anyway, but, you know, that's uh, the way that government works. They, they say, oh, you wouldn't believe the amount of extra money we're giving, uh, which is uh, the exact same amount that we said we were going to give them last year. It's the same, it's the same money. And anyway, £2.8 billion pounds extra for the NHS is a sum also known as not nearly enough. And <laughs> my favourite one, broadband. You've uh, seen the internet, haven't you? The Chancellor announced that the government is going to make a, uh, an investment in 5G and full fibre broadband. They're going to be spending a £385 million, pound, which will be approximately enough to dig a hole in the road outside your house and leave it there. I don't know why he bothered. I suppose he has to do something to make it appear as though he's worth the money. I don't get it myself. So um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll dive into uh, one of the reasons why it was such a weak and insipid budget and why we are looking at 50 years of, um, uh, I, don't, I don't mean to sound depressing about this, but gloom and doom. 
50 years, apparently, according to experts. Listen to him. He knows everything. Uh, Julian uh, messages, you state that we will get bad weather in earnest. I have travelled the length and breadth of the country, but where on earth is Ernest? Um, Junction 12, the M25, near Solom, on the River Stade. Oh, it's lovely down there. A bit dull. Boring! That's what I mean. Here's a call in Cheltenham. Amber. Hi. Amber. Hello. Amber. Right, well, I was listening to what you said about the housing market and the help for first-time buyers. Yeah, big deal. Yeah, exactly. And I think that successive governments have actually sustained the artificially inflated property market. And it almost appears that they're using housing as a means to impoverish people. Because it doesn't matter what kind of job you do, whether you've got a, a rubbish part-time job a full-time executive position, it doesn't matter. Everybody seems to feel like a hamster running round in a wheel. Unless they bought, they had the foresight to be born early and bought at their house when they were giving them away free with 10 gallons of petrol. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I, think it's I, the, I think it's rather the other way around. It's not some evil, wicked scheme for the government to impo keep people impoverished. It's rather, if it is a wicked scheme at all, mm. and that does presuppose that they're smart enough to think it up, but I'm, I'm, I would suggest that it's more that they are. The, the plan is to keep those who have already got their wealth in um, the uh, uh, in, in the pink, so to speak. Oh, I think that's going on as well. But I mean, you have to admit the division between rich and poor is getting wider and wider, and that seems to be deliberate, in my opinion. Um, mm, but and I, but why would that, they? Why would they do that? Rather, control than it's a control mechanism because they know that in relatively short time, millions are going to be out of work. There will be no work for them, and they need to control that population. They don't really know what the hell to do. They're not speaking the truth. It doesn't matter which political party you vote in, whatever your political beliefs. The politicians are not speaking the truth. They know millions are going to lose their job. Or oh, you're talking at about moment, artificial intelligence. Correct. Yeah. yeah okay. And at the moment, you know, most people, huge numbers of people in work are being kept artificially afloat through income support measures like... Um, uh, what you call it, tax credits and so on. Yeah. Um, but that, that does rather imply that the government is run by incredibly smart people who have the foresight to think this thing through uh, and, plan, and, plan, for the 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 and plan for the future. The politicians are not running the government. The politicians are being run by big business. Oh, well, they that's different. They are being told what to do. That's different. I suspect that they're not being told what to do. It's just that they're being taken advantage of. Well, they certainly, I uh, know some backbench MPs say it's harder for them to get in and see prime ministers, and this has been true of successive governments, than it is for people who are head of big global companies to oh, get yeah. in, drop in at uh, a moment's notice. Exactly. And if you think about what they're doing in terms of the money that Hammond's just announced going into house building, it's ludicrous. The man should be sacked. <laughs> Instead of pumping that money in the way he is, in traditional house building, which means that the big building companies are going to make the money. It's not mm. going to help the British public. What they need to do is flat pack homes. I've researched this. There are dozens of British companies producing amazing flat pack homes that are either a mix of wood and glass and metal construction or are like wooden chalets. And some of them are really, really pretty homes. Well, well some of them are among the most expensive bills that you can buy. Like Huff, no, the ones well, I've checked out are under 30 grand. Well, y yes, I think that it, the, the way that we build houses now is uh, going to be, uh, in a very short period, is going to look just ridiculous. Uh, and how anachronistic. We, in a, in a muddy field, build up f from the bottom yeah. with electricians and plumbers yeah. and plasterers and um, carpenters and all the rest of it working in the rain and the snow and the sun um, all together in this big mess, which is yep. a, just a ridiculous way to build anything, let alone and something as complicated as a house. Brick boxes. Oh, they're terrible. With plastic windows. You know, they're very unattractive. These who these architects are? I know that. Yeah, uh, yes, that's right. But who these architects are that um, that draw these things up? I mean, maybe they just don't even bother having an architect. Maybe they just have somebody design one house, tiny little place, no room for cupboards, small, small little windows, 
mean sized rooms and then they just repeat it up and down the country. It's the same yeah, blooming house everywhere you look. Isn't it? Because it's all about maximum profit for the yeah, builder. Exactly. That's what it's all about. It's not about providing for the customer. Uh, no, they're not remotely interested in the customer. I mean, no. all, the, all of these towers that are going up in uh, London, uh, it's, uh, if, if you look at London from a distance, if you see the skyline of London at night, it looks, um, it's, it's really quite uh, beautiful. It's just a, uh, a sea of uh, red lights uh, for as far as you can, um, well, see. Well, the, mic the micro uh, buildings that they're doing, the micro housing thing, has come from America, and that's part of the UN Sustainable Development Agenda 21. What's they have people what's living in smart cities. What's which micro? Are all Wait a minute. What's micro housing? Micro housing is little tiny apartments where you're literally living in a studio, and they they make everything smaller. And than that normal. came from America. That's come from America. Oh, it it's doesn't going on sound in like. It doesn't sound like something. But California's no. got no end of space. Why would they no, want micro well, housing? Yeah, but they are developing micro apartments, packing them in in cities because that's what the smart. Well, we don't need. We don't need the, the America to teach us that. We've got some of the smallest uh, homes on um, in the, in the whole of Europe. That's absolutely true. Yeah. But, I mean, it's going to get worse because, for instance, in London, which is one of the key smart cities of the country... Smart. ...and will be fully automated within uh, the next decade... What do you mean? Have you not... Do you not know about the government smart city... Well, it's not a government thing, it's a global thing. Do you not know about the smart city agenda? Have you not read the papers on it? Oh, read? No, reading is very bad for your eyes, <laughs> Amber. I'll wait till the video comes out. A smart city? Yeah, all the key cities in the, in the Western world are earmarked to be smart cities. Like what does that mean? They, they are going to be... They hope to bring them in to be fully automated. What does and that mean? It means that transport will be automated. You will have no money... You will be everything that you do will be paid for with your card. They'll be able to look. Uh, they'll be able to log you wherever you're going. And China, right, this, some this of the Chinese politicians. This doesn't politicians, sound smart to me. Yeah, sorry. Uh, what you're describing doesn't sound smart. No, but smart's just another word for high tech. No, it's not. It is. Well, it isn't. It's, it's used. They talk about smart technology. It means high tech. Well, who are they? Or well, the names is, of the this people. This is what the builders, burgers, and all the big global groups oh, decide God. things. Not, are not men in dark suits who no, uh, no, who I'm meet serious. in secret in hollowed out volcanoes, yeah, Amber. No, Do yourself a favour, Amber. Stop reading the internet. Whew. Anyway, much of what she said is uh, completely correct in every respect. <laughs> But I, I think that it's a less a, 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 a global overweening scheme from uh, the government and their evil backers, and more just like they stumbled into it. And like the greedy individuals we are, they just tried to suck up as much as they possibly could before they got fired or, uh, you know, left to uh, enjoy their retirement, whichever comes first. But yeah, we've got to stop building houses like we're building them at the moment. It's just daft. Very, very um, uh, backward and uneconomic. We have to build houses like uh, the Germans do. Not all of them, of course, but um, they uh, seem to be, as with much else that has something to do with manufacturing, they are leading the way. Houses should be built in factories and delivered on site to be put up in about uh, half an hour flat. This um, building up from a muddy field, brick by brick, that's just stupid. What are we still doing that for? Mind you, all of those uh, building jobs, they, they're about to be... Uh, you're all about to be replaced by robots. Affirmative. As soon as they uh, learn... As soon as robots learn how to swear and spit, game's over. Um, she was um, emotional. <laughs> Let's have... Uh, um, see what this one's like. Camden. Hello, Mohammed. Hey, good evening, Nick. You know, it's because of you. I, I, I joined the podcast and I downloaded it because it's nice to listen to you on the way to work. Oh, well, thanks very much. You're welcome. So listen, I, I was cracking up because prior to the announcement by the Tories, they made it sound like they're going to give some amazing deal to all young people about yeah. the housing, right? And I've been saving aggressively. I've got two jobs and, you know, praise God, I... I'm, I'm earning good money way above the national average, but nowhere near to be able to afford a place in central London, which is what I'm 
Well, fortunately, the Conservative government have come to your rescue and they're going to save you, what, £3,000 off the price of a house, which, which only leaves you four million nine hundred and ninety-nine thousand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm telling you, I've made £1,000 from the markets in two weeks. I'm now going to just totally rely on the stock markets because I tell you something I've realised. When you've got capital, you can make more capital. And I'm no longer going to rely on the government to give any form of compensation or assistance now. I've well, got a bulk sum, and it's a risk. I don't, I don't know anything about anything, but I would say... Uh, warning! Warning! Don't trust all your money in the stock market. That's a fool's game. Well, you might as well put I, it on black in a casino. I've made some decent investments. So, I mean, I, it's, it's paying. It's paying so far. I know there's a risk. But I'm willing, even if things go a little bit tesh. Oh, actually, the thing I forgot to mention is that I've invested into the American and European stocks. I've not, I don't oh, trust no. the British stocks oh, anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> I've, I've lost faith in Britain <laughs> after, you know, post-Brexit. I just don't know what to say, but... Yeah, really I, 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 put all, I put all my money in uh, China and Zimbabwe. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Nick, seriously, I just, I just... I've almost given up. Do you know there's that offensive comment? People say, oh, young people, stop eating avocado, this, that, and the other. Yeah. I went out of my meats the other day, right? And I just thought to myself... Why shouldn't I enjoy a nice meal with my friends? Well, you know, a nice meal and it. avocado are not something you would uh, <laughs> normally sit in the same sentence. Well, true, but, I, you know, my bill came up to £40, pound and then I thought, damn, if I put that 40 quid in the stock market, that could have gone up. Yeah. This is or, or down. Or down, yeah. yeah. No, Your investment it. may go down as well as up. Always read the no. label. I know, uh, terms and Nick. conditions apply. Do not operate heavy <laughs> machinery. But, Nick, I've lost faith in government i've just right. lost absolute faith I, I well that you had faith in the first place is astonishing to me mohammed where did you get that from <laughs> but now uh, now that the government has uh, bunged uh, you kids uh, three grand to uh, save off the half million pounds that it's going to cost you to buy a tiny executive flatlet exactly then you're much <laughs> more likely to uh, vote conservative yes no i'll just assume that the answer is no <laughs> thanks a lot mohammed not actually doing anything for young people just talking about young people Oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Trust us, kids. We're hip. We're with it. <laughs> it's because the old equation is broken. It used to go like this. Young people uh, with, uh, you know, uh, stars in their eyes would vote, uh, the, uh, Labour, would vote for the Labour Party or the Lib Dems or the Greenies. Yowza. Because it uh, sat well with their um, uh, youthful socialist credentials. You know what kids like, they're anarchist one day and uh, um, socialists the next. <laughs> but once they got a bit of money, once they uh, bought their house for £20,000 or whatever it was, um, they were, in the you know, days of old when they were giving them away, and they acquired wealth, then they wanted to maintain that wealth. They wanted to keep it, they didn't want anybody to take it away from them. Suddenly they weren't so socialist anymore, and so they would start to vote conservative. <laughs> But now, kids ain't getting a house. And they're not acquiring wealth. Oh, there's a lot of people that are, that are employed in this country, all right, and they're making about £2.60 a day. In old money. So the equation is broken. Kids aren't acquiring wealth, so they won't be, vote they won't be leaving the Labour Party or the Lib Dems or the uh, Greenies and voting Conservative anymore in their middle age when they get wealthy because they ain't getting wealthy no more. The Conservatives are doomed. But, you know, keep talking about the kids, and uh, I'm sure they'll come around eventually. Everything is going extremely well. You bet your life it is. Uh, Matt messages, I just wish the Lib Dems would get their act together and be more effective, and I'd happily vote for them. Me too. I happily voted for them twice. In the, uh, not the last uh, election, but the two before that. Precisely because they were none of the above. We need a, a good, strong uh, party of the middle ground that is vital and thrusting and forward-looking and it's uh, unlikely that we're going to get that uh, with their uh, current leader current leader anybody anybody at all anyone at the back there vince cable uncle vince the man who is so old he looks like he sleeps in a pyramid <laughs> no offense what is it 150 160 here's a call in uh, richmond rajiv Oh, hello, Nick uh, Abbott, sir. Uh, good evening to you, sir. Uh, 
You know, I just like to point out the very serious issues that are facing this country. Oh, no. And the issues are such that the people of this country, of United Kingdom, they voted for Brexit. And one has to ask, well, why did they vote for Brexit? They voted for Brexit because they have been fed up with poverty in this country no. for such a long time. That's not it. And they have gone back to the years... We don't, we don't really have... No, no, we don't, on, we on, don't really finish. have poverty have, in this country have, compared have, to have, other have, countries. There is, there is an extreme poverty in this country. No, not and really. And these people voted for Brexit. And, you know, I just... I think they on, voted for Brexit because they don't like the idea of being surrounded by when, foreigners. When, uh, this no, is, on, by the way, in, in case you haven't heard this call before, this is the guy who starts very softly and within a moment starts bellowing oh, down oh, the phone like he's trying to sure. blow his own lid off. I'm listening to you, sir. Go I'm ahead. just listening to you. You know, there are some people I hear, Mr. Nick, I hear they are going back to the days of Enoch Powell, the rivers of blood and all mm. that talk. Yeah. And, you know, these are the people... The, the, you know, look, in a way... You know, you know, I come, I'm an Indian uh, descent person. I come from British, uh, I, you know, uh, the situation, as you understand. And, and you know, you know, this level of conversation never took place before we joined the EEC, allowed all these people into this country. <laughs> and you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know I, I, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Actually, you know, the racism, you ask the police, the racism has increased. Not against me or anything. Rajiv, what are you talking about? People have been saying that this country is full since the first boat came over from the Caribbean in the 1950s or whenever that was. The the moment they right. see a, somebody who doesn't walk, talk and squawk exactly like them, they want to pull right. up the drawbridge and say, no, there's no more room in here. Okay, I understand. And, I you, understand. and you, by the way, would be out on your ear for a start. Regardless of well, where you were born, people would just look at you, uh, People, uh, the kind of person that voted for uh, Brexit, the kind of person that you're talking about, uh, would be uh, you you'd be first on the list well i voted for brexit i voted for brexit actually why and, and, uh, why well of course I, you, I tell you, I, you, I, I, you sat down with the books and poured over the economic benefits of being in or out of the uh, of the not uh, really, union. Not really. No, and not actually, really. To exactly. You, to be honest with you, I voted for brexit, but I regret it. <laughs> you know, you know why I regret it. You know, I do. I mean, I'm, I'm being very honest with you. Because you it's know, the I because find, do you regret it? Because people. it's the topic on every other uh, every other conversation that anybody has had in this country well, since the well, since this the vote. Country should should actually get it act together in Switzerland. You know, I used to have a girlfriend in Switzerland, and you know what? In Switzerland, the law is you have to live in our country for five years. Pay the taxes, and only then you're allowed to buy a property. Yeah? Even Phil Collins went to Switzerland. <laughs> he married a woman, and he was not allowed to buy a bloody property. I was in Switzerland. I was not allowed to buy a property. Yeah. There, you have to live. This country, why can't this country get its heads act together? And why can't this country try to make its poorest richest? Why? Why this country has to live at people like look at people like Kensington, Harrods, yeah, and but, people living. But that's you know, the, that's the same. That is the same things? in every country on earth. But we don't Tell have the me. same level don't of poverty think? that they do in the third world. We don't even have the same level of poverty that they do in the second world. You know, people. There are people living on the streets in this country, but that that's the case in every nation. But we don't have that grinding level of poverty, like actual, real, proper poverty, where people don't have televisions or sky sports that's the kind of poverty i'm talking about God. oh you know you know people have televisions people have no food to eat in this country mm. and they have no money to heat their homes yeah well that's the united yeah. kingdom is the fifth largest country in the world yeah. and people are going to food banks my god you know i need to make a documentary and i need to show it you know People have no money for food, for heating, for anything like that. And they're stealing their shoplifting to support themselves. Uh, well, they're, they're shoplifting. My um, God, yeah, I'm where not, is our know. Prime Minister? I'm, I'm, I'm Who not is sure. going to do anything about this <laughs> poorest, sure about the poorest <laughs> people of this country? Take a chill pill, man. Just relax. Take a chill. Take a cup of hot tea, man. Yeah, yeah. Just take a deep breath yeah. in and hold it. 
You know, Nick. You're not you holding know, this it. Is your, this is You're your responsibility. Blind word to I'm saying. You address the issue of the poverty of You're country. addicted. You're, you're addicted to you anger. You, you are addicted to anger, Rajiv. Let me tell you what's happening. You know what? let, let me tell you. Shut up. One minute. I know what I'm talking about here. What is happening is that you uh, you started quite calm. As is the case every time you call up. I've heard your call over and over again. It's always exactly the same. It's the same scenario. And here's what you do. You um, say something a bit loud. You get a little bit angry. And um, it's the, your brain secretes some um, uh, chemical, an endorphin, which squirts all over your brain. And you think, oh, yeah, there it is. I'm going to chase that. It's the same thing that people uh, have with uh, road rage and trolley rage and uh, pavement rage and parking rage and every other rage that's ever been invented. We're addicted to anger in this country. It's actually quite exciting. Try it yourself. As soon as you get angry, you don't even have to actually be angry at any particular thing. You just have to make out like you are. Like smiling makes you feel happier because of the uh, feedback that from your face, your brain thinks, uh, oh, I'm <laughs> something must be good. Look at that, I'm smiling. And you feel better. Try it now. Same thing with anger. If you start bellowing and yelling, you, you get these uh, chemicals coursing through your brain hole. And you think, ooh, yeah, there it is, I'm going to chase that. And the result is that the entire country is absolutely blooming clenched fists, shouting furious at everybody else in this country. He was so uh, <laughs> furious, it's, he just exploded. I didn't cut him off, he disappeared himself. And not a moment too soon. Nobody knows who the hell he is! This message says, uh, how dare you say that we are addicted to anger, now I'm livid. I know what I'm talking about because I used to be addicted to anger myself and I used to chase that to high when you uh, get um, you know your, uh, your, bro your blood starts boiling and the chemicals start whizzing about in your brain and I just caught myself one day and I thought you know what I'm not gonna do this anymore and now I am peaceful and serene Groovy. here's a call in Dagenham hello Pat oh hello Pat <laughs> Um, no, it was that girl that came on about housing. Oh, yes. Building, um, like you said, building houses in um, factories. Yeah. Totally what I believe in, totally. We are so backward in this country. You know, I mean, in Sweden and, and other European countries, they do flat pack houses, I think they're called, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a brilliant idea. It's the only way forward. It make, it's the only thing that makes any sense. You want a house built uh, to completion, apart from the actual nailing it together with all the pipes and the wiring and uh, the insulation and all of that stuff, in a controlled environment, inside, in a factory. Not outside in the rain and the snow. Not b b b b belted to, or uh, nailed together by um, some people who don't actually know very much of what they're doing. The trouble is, Nick. There's not trouble, is there? People that run this country are backward. <laughs> oh, definitely backward. In Europe, <laughs> those countries in Europe, they're forward. And um, my kids, I've got children, they all live abroad and, and they think that Brexit was the worst thing ever. I, well, I, I, it may not be the worst thing ever ever but it seems like an unnecessary upsetting of the apple cart because things were just ticking along uh, relatively smoothly you yeah. know the country was uh, relatively successful we were relatively well off things were going relatively well why chuck everything upside down and uh, sink it and set it on fire now when uh, things were uh, just uh, tickety boo i know makes no sense but it could be overturned Legally, oh, an exit from order. Brexit? I told you that before. Exit from Brexit, that's what people are calling it. An exit from Brexit. Who's with me? <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's two. It's a start. Uh -huh. 
Uh, you know, the, the, gov- the government, in all their uh, incompetence and ineptitude, is going to be uh, trying to figure uh, either it's this government or the next one is either going to is going to be trying to figure this out from uh, now until the end of time. And uh, we got the recession that we're gonna, still going to be clawing our way out of in fifty years, and now we got this on top of it. It's just crazy. Oh. Why on earth were we persuaded to go down this route? And I want the name of the person that was responsible. I'm a nutcase. Without mentioning any uh, names from this power. We'll have to sort them out. <laughs> right, oh Pat. Okay. So. I'm right. I'm right behind you. You throw the first punch. Let's have um. This one's been waiting a while. Uh, Ealing. Hello, Raf. Uh, evening. Raf. Yes. Um. The chap earlier. Um. What he wasn't saying, I don't think, was wholly unreasonable. Which one? I don't think. It's, um. Uh, Indian chap. Oh. Um. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I don't think it's just racist. Um, I think a large proportion of our society, uh, namely white working class folk and other working class folk, um, are, are worried that we have finite resources and the distribution and consumption is going to those persons that are A, not indigenous to this country, or B, not first, second or third generation integrated. Wait, 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 wait. You think that most of the... uh, Say that again. Right, so um, the reason we had Brexit is because the working class were historically making a statement in this country that enough is enough, something has to be done. No, but you think that the the majority of the uh, wealth that's created in this country is going to who? Um, not the majority, but a significant proportion of it, which should be going to the grassroots of our society, is not going to the grassroots of our society. It's being sent in terms of payments abroad, uh, carers, allowance and what have you, to people that live in other countries. The benefit system is... is, is, is oh, foreign so- aid. Uh, no, no, not for an aid. So somebody makes a claim here for working tax credit, um, but there's multiple examples. This is sort of side tracking, and then payments go through to somebody sitting in a, another country um, because they're. Uh, I don't know how they they they, they worked it out, but, yeah, but I, I, I don't. I don't think, think any of that's true. They, they might get retirement. Um, you know, their pension paid if they're uh, sitting enjoying themselves in Spain, sucking up all that uh, good weather. But, um, um, yeah, yes, but, but, but not just that. The, the, the working class, for example, we have things going on in terms of political correctness, and um, uh, we... What's that got to do with the uh, EU? Because uh, um, there's so many issues that are not being listened to. Um, but what's and- that got to do with the EU? Because um, without thinking about it on a, on a very primitive, crude level, um, people get angry. And when you get angry, you're something called the neocortex, where cognitive... Right, and, and right, never mind about that. Let's just stick with the first part of what you just said. Pe- without huh? thinking about it. Bingo! People didn't think. They didn't think it through because they didn't have the information at hand to think it through, and they were damned if they were going to go and look it up. People voted for Brexit because they didn't like the idea of being surrounded by foreigners. Why are we kidding ourselves that it was any other reason? It wasn't for the economic benefit of leaving the European Union and, enga- well, and engaging, into, uh, engaging with uh, other countries directly for trade deals. Nobody uh, paid the slightest bit of attention to that. No, no, but why not listen to them? Because that's the reason why they they voted in in this way because they're angry about other issues and they think, right, this is the solution. And this well, is then the they're problem. nuts. If that's the reason that they voted to, to, in order to become less poor, they're nuts yes. or wildly the, misinformed. Why, no choice at this, best. This, this is a but this is a biased thing we've given to the voting public. Yeah, we well, should never right. have been given to the voting public because uh, you know I've met the voting public uh, RAF as you have and what do you think of them I wouldn't let them wash my dog um, I, I, I salute them <laughs> they, they, they are my British um, uh, um, what's the word, compatriots or, or right. fellow citizens well you salute them if you like I'll avoid them how's that sound all right mate okay thanks a lot Raf. Nobody voted for the economic benefits of leaving the European Union because nobody uh, sat down and looked at the uh, the books for a single millisecond and if you really did vote to leave the EU because you thought it was going to make you richer, well, I have a genuine uh, Rofex watch made in China that I'd like to sell you. Yours for only £10,000. Wanstead. Hello, Sophie. Wow. An echoing silence. Let me try it again. Tapping it. 
nothing happens. Tapping it, nothing happens. Can you put down uh, line two because it's uh, broken? No, you can't either. Situation normal, all screwed up. Go ahead, I double dare you. No, we can't do it. So, I'll fill. You know, I was talking to that uh, Indian uh, chap for some moments ago. And um, he was, uh, you know, uh, discussing... Um, uh, I don't actually know. I, I, I covered my ears in order to protect my hearing. But there, there is no need to be concerned about losing trade to the EU because we can prosper outside of that group and strike up deals with uh, old friends like India. Huge economy, massive potential. We could strike a deal in moments and we wouldn't get any blooming foreigners coming over here except... India's High Commissioner to the UK said that Britain must accept, you might want to sit down for this, higher levels of immigration from India if it hopes to sign a free trade agreement after Brexit. And even if we do agree to that, it could take up to 10 years to secure that deal. Oh, no. You know, people who will uh, persuade you that uh, 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 trade negotiations can be uh, written down on the back of an envelope and negotiated before you finish your first pint, they are dreaming. Well, they might be uh, actually just flat out lying to you. India's High Commissioner to the UK said freer movement of people had to form part of any future deal to ensure that it was mutually beneficial. And correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I've got this totally back backwards. But when people voted out of the EU because of all those blooming foreigners coming here, they probably didn't have in mind to stop white European immigrants coming and have them replaced by immigrants from India. Now, I might be wrong about that, but I bet I'm not. So India's High Commissioner, speaking to uh, business leaders in London, said that he was very confident that a winning partnership between the two countries could emerge after Britain's departure from the EU. And that's good news. If only he'd stopped there, but he didn't. He also said that signing a free trade agreement was obviously not going to be easy and suggested the deal might not be completed till 2030. What? <laughs> that's the future. Yet yeah, meanwhile, where are we going to sell stuff? His comments highlight the challenges and concessions Britain will face in securing post-Brexit trade deals with Commonwealth countries as part of its Global Britain initiative. You know, we're open for business and all that guff. And that was the Telegraph saying that, by the way, that last bit, highlighting the challenges and the concessions that Britain will face in securing post-Brexit trade deals. The Act Her Majesty's Telegraph said that. The paper that's leading the Brexit ultras in their desire to get as far away from the EU bloc as possible. If it was down to the Telegraph, they'd put an outboard motor on this country and steam it off in the, in the, into the Atlantic if they could. <coughs> Going down. You know what? Never mind about India. We could do a deal with our old muckers Australia. They love us. They said they'll be signing a, a free trade deal with us. And it would be great if only they stopped there. But then they added that their new long-term foreign policy blueprint uh, signals uh, what they call our creeping irrelevance to Australia. They think we're irrelevant. Could it be uh, the uh, 10,000 miles of nothing between us and Australia? Yes. Yeah, maybe, yeah. I mean, you'd really have to be out of your mind to forego a free trade deal with a market of 600 million people that's so near you could see it with a naked eye on a clear day for a market of 24 million people that's so far away you'd have to leave the planet to get further. Apparently Australia produced a 136 page foreign policy white paper released by the Prime Minister. Prime Minister of uh, Australia, anybody? And it included no special section on ties with Britain. They just ignored us. James Curran, an expert on Australia's foreign relations said the latest white paper that they uh, produced about uh, trade um, uh, you know going down the line was confirmation of the rapidly diminishing importance of relations between Australia and this country they don't love us anymore and with good reason by the way we didn't exactly send them our best people did we no 
So even the Commonwealth countries are uh, looking at us going, well, I don't know. You know, but apart from that, everything's rosy and working uh, very, very well. Thanks for asking. Whose fault is it again? I'm a nutcase. <laughs> Part of the reason is we're not collecting enough tax in this country in order to uh, fund all of the uh, projects and the uh, things that are necessary for the successful running of a uh, major economy. And there's a good reason for that. What the hell is going on? The person of the year. Oh, my God, that man is... Uh, he's just, if it wasn't so serious, it'd be hilarious. Donald Trump. Tremendous tool. Exactly. It's just, uh, I, I, sometimes I'm just speechless. It's just me, me, me. The person of the year. He thinks that's uh, an accolade. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's just that you're in the news the most of any of anybody, in, you know, if it had been in the 1960s, it might have been, um, oh, and I knew that I was going to forget this guy's name, Charles Manson. Manson. He would have been person of the year. Just newsworthy, that's all. You great orange galumph. A president! Can you believe it? No. <laughs> he, he would be the, uh, the, uh, the sex abuser of the year, or the alleged sex abuser of the year. He'd win that in a, um, in a, um, like, hands down. I will be so great to women. I cherish women. Yeah, we know you do. Actually, the, um, the Washington Post gave us a running commentary on all 13 current allegations of uh, sexual abuse levelled at Donald Trump, almost all of which have two or more contemporary corroborators, which is a very difficult thing to say, I think you'll find. You try it. Contemporary corroborators. Wanstead, hello, Sophie. Hi, Nick. How are you? I'm great, mate. You excommunicated me earlier. Well, it was nothing to do with me. It was like that when I got here. <laughs> well, talking about Donald Trump, actually, that's no accolade because I think Osama bin Laden was made Person of the Year by Time magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, that was great. Oh, so, I, I need a cigarette and a lie down. Oh, that was absolutely sensational. Did, did I get any on you? <laughs> 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 that nice moment <laughs> that they um i think <sighs> they do people who are so <laughs> you're enjoying this moment too much yeah <laughs> a little bit yeah <sighs> i think they choose the person <laughs> they, they yeah, right, um, right about now my my mind's going <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they choose the person who has been most significant in the news yes and that megalomaniac can See, that point segues into my the point I the reason I rang. I discovered this week that in ancient during ancient Greek times, mm. um, anyone who wasn't a politician was called an idiot. <laughs> now you can, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> now, now it's the other way around. Exactly. You know, um refer to the orange galump in the White House. Yeah. And uh, the absolute mess that is Westminster at the moment. We think you're an idiot, Donnie. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, stupid. <laughs> I've, I've got a visualisation board, actually, and I should put a picture of him with bars in front of him. You know, I hope that <laughs> <laughs> His son-in-law is going to be first in jail. I can't wait till that happens. And, and he's way too pretty for jail. In fact, he's too pretty for women's jail. Jared Kushner, and you are going down. We're going to build a big, beautiful wall around you. I'm building a wall, okay? I'm building a wall. I'm building a wall, okay? I'm building a wall. Yeah. And I think how that his son-in-law and his daughter have got such a prominent place on the stage of world politics, I do not know. I think that's dangerous. And I think the whole point of the Amer American... Uh, system of government, the executive, the legislature, yeah, and supposed the to judiciary. Uh, prevent that. Exactly. Yeah, but, it's exactly. but because um, Republicans will vote for a, uh, a Republican regardless of who it. If you put a, an R next to a dog, 
and put it up for a Senate race, the Republicans would vote for him. Doesn't matter who it is. <laughs> if you put an alleged sex abuser who was banned from a shopping mall for hanging around trying to pick up teenage girls, if you put him up for a uh, run at the Senate position, then they would still vote for him uh, uh, just to prevent a so-called liberal getting in, because in America uh, they use the word liberal as an insult. And I don't, exactly, and I don't understand why they find it so unacceptable in the entertainment business, which it should be. Um, but the politicians seem to be able to get away with it. I just don't well, understand. one in particular seems to be able to get away with it. Just one, one in particular seems to be <laughs> more guilty than most and is getting away with it better than most. You are going to love President Trump. Yeah. Over I and over and to, over again. <laughs> <laughs> I need to start a GoFundMe page and. Um, just pick any random person to run for the White House, please. Just pick any please. random person and ask them <laughs> if they've ever been abused by Donald Trump. <laughs> exactly. Oh, actually, can I say, um, it came up in the news and I uh, really, really wanted to make this point for anyone who thinks that the lunatics who align themselves with the religion, the Islamic religion, and say it's a violent religion and they're fanat all fanatical, the terrible bombing in Egypt, it was, it happened in a mosque. And who uses a mosque? Muslim. Yeah, but more Muslims have been killed by uh, Muslim terrorists than um, Christians, as far as I'm aware. Exactly. It's just the wrong kind of Muslims, you know, if you, you uh, believe uh, just, a, just a tiny... That's the thing with religionists. If you, if you can believe 99% uh, of what they believe in your... Uh, in, in, and they'll still want to kill you, just from the 1%. Exactly. They're just strong-headed lunatics, and I really, really hope that people remember that they have absolutely nothing to do with most 99.9% of... Yeah, people. that's, a, that's a, a pointless argument to have, though, Sophie, because you say they're getting it all wrong, and they will say, no, you're getting it all wrong, and in a thousand years' time, you'll still be saying the exact same thing. Exactly. And never the train shall meet. Yeah, religion is the problem. It's not the, it's, if, it if religion is the solution, I'd like to know what the question is. <laughs> oh, and another thing, actually. And another thing. Am, is I'm it the Roman Catholic head. Church are going to sue uh, choir boys for saying that they were a priest and molested them? Is that the thing that you were about to say? That's no, actually true. No. The Roman Catholic Church are about oh, to really? yeah, they're threatened to sue choir boys for claiming that they have been uh, sexually abused by their priests. <laughs> that's terrible. And actually, you've reminded me of another thing, that silly woman who wants um, uh, that fairy tale taken off out of schools because she thinks that, Cin was it Cinderella didn't agree to be kissed? Um, Cinderella? Uh, are you sure it wasn't, Cin Cinderella. Are you sure it wasn't Cinderfella? Because I could uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would understand oh, their complaints. <laughs> I wouldn't agree with it, but I would understand. I used my first ever <laughs> unisex washroom today. <laughs> what? And what was it like? Did it smell uh, better than an ordinary washroom? No, it was neutral. Was it a little bit neutral. cleaner? Huh? <laughs> it was neutral. It right. was a gender neutral. <laughs> right. It was a neutral, no, was a neutral a smelling one. <laughs> okay. But I'm hanging my head in shame because December has not even started and I've already eaten two mince pies. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'm way ahead of you. But do you have any decorations up? I have yet to buy the Christmas tree. I'm going yeah. to do that this week. My little desk Christmas tree with my baubles. But you mean this coming week, not not in the next couple of days. Not the end of this no, week, this but the, the next week. Well, that doesn't that week. broach uh, the beginning of December? That's okay. At the yes, very, very exactly. end of uh, November. If there's a weekend at the very end of November, that's okay. You can put up your Christmas uh, decorations. But uh, like a week ago, I saw uh, into uh, somebody's front rooms I was driving by, and they had a Christmas tree up. <laughs> this is like the middle of November. That's ridiculous. I hate to disappoint you, but there's a Christmas tree up in beautiful Wanstead as well, on the green. Oh, and outside? Well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I can sort of understand that councils would want to get it all up and ready because, you know, they'll have spent, what, £5.50 on those decorations? They want to really get their <laughs> maximum benefit from them. It's looking really pretty. Yeah, if it was it any <laughs> in any other part of East London, maybe they'd steal the baubles, but yeah. in one spot, I think. <laughs> 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 let it be. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, I'm glad to hear it, Sophie. Oh, I did a brilliant thing on um, uh, whatever it was, Wednesday. 
I went to Kew Gardens uh, Christmas lights. Groovy. They are fantastic. Do you like uh, having uh, the uh, spangles in your eyes? Yowza. Yeah, me too. I thoroughly recommend it. It was uh, wonderful, and it's a uh, you, know, you know it's a tremendous organisation, and um, uh, well worth your support. But really, they're just fantastic. Twice as good as they were last year, and they were pretty good last year. Oh look, it's the second most expensive MP um, of uh, the previous financial year. It's our very own Alex. Here is uh, Braintree Russell. Yeah. Good evening, Nick. Russell. Hello, mate. Um, I'd just like to uh, go back to what you've been saying over the last hour about UKIPers and like, Brexiteers and whatever. Yeah. I I um, joined UKIP in 2007 and left in 2016 after I got exactly what I asked for. And, like, I set out to leave Europe. That's what that's what uh, UKIP stand stood for. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't renew my membership last year because we, we actually won. Because <laughs> there's no, no point to UKIP anymore. The arguments that UKIP stands for aren't valid. Yeah. But we, we wanted independence for the United Kingdom. We got it. So the party doesn't exist. United Kingdom Independence Party, we achieved our goal. And that's that. Right. What, what you're saying is that, like, oh, we, we're economically um, stupid and irrelevant and, and this, that, and ever. We can't foresee the future. Yeah? The reason why I joined UKIP and the reason why I voted UKIP and, mm. and the, the majority of the, co the country did is because it's a socialist experiment. The a whole of the European... socialist experiment? What does that mean? Yeah. There's, there's, there's six or seven countries that actually net contribute to the European Union, Germany being the main one, yeah? The net receivers... They're always going to say, "Oh, yeah, we, we can't allow, we can't allow uh, the UK." But ask yourself this: Wh Why do uh, well-off countries like Germany and uh, this country put foreign aid, if you want to call it that, into For, a foreign, less aid, foreign aid? Foreign aid is global, so it's not. It's not. Yeah, I'm doing yeah, you. Yeah, I, I know, but we're talking about foreign countries, and we're aiding them, mm -hmm. right? So let's just call it foreign aid. Why? Why do you think we spend the foreign? Just because out of the goodness of our hearts? Because we just like being nice? Because. Uh, the immigration we've had into the UK... No, thing. no, that's not it. It's to raise them out of their, their poverty so that they will buy more of the stuff that we make. It's self-serving. Yeah. No, it's not so. It uh, okay, that is exactly so, your, what your argument with that. Unless you just think that we're nice people and we like giving money to the poor, and no. you can uh, believe that if you like. If you if, if you want to take that angle of your argument. The reason why Romanians, Bulgarians, Polish people come over to the UK was because the average wage, the average wage in their home country mm -hmm. was five hundred pounds. Yeah. A month. Oh, thank, thank yeah, goodness, thank here, goodness that they do. Them. Otherwise, none of those jobs would be being done. But would we need them? Do you want your car washed three times a week? Do you really no, desire? No, I, I wash my own car. But that's not the exactly. reason that they're coming here to stand around in their freezing cold in a supermarket yeah. car park to wash people's cars. They when was the last time you went to a restaurant, Russell? Uh, three times a month, maybe. Three times a month. Do you ever get served by a British person? No. Right. <laughs> now, if they didn't come over here and do those jobs, who would be doing them? You'd be cooking your own be, food and bringing less, it to your own there would table. Be less choice. There would be less. But that's not, that's not the point, is it? No, it is the point. There would be less choice. Because, because, they, okay, are you okay, saying okay, that there would be okay. fewer restaurants? Right, so the waitress that serves me gets yeah. minimum wage from, from whoever it is that's the, the restaurant we, we, that mm. I'm going to. And if she hadn't come she over also, here, they, that but, position but would receive, not exist. But, but, they also receive, but they also receive housing benefits, uh, tax credits, this credit, that credit, the other. And, and it, does, it doesn't add. It does add. It, it does it, not uh, add. No, it absolutely does. You, you haven't looked into it any more than just repeating the, what you've heard, uh, what's his name say? We've got a few idiots in our party. Just over and over and over again with the same blooming uh, uh, inaccurate arguments. People who come over here take less in benefits than do the indigenous population, Again, Russell. That's, that's you the, must know the, that, the, surely. That's the, that's the polar opposite of what I'm saying. I've got Polish neighbours and, like, uh, they, they integrate into, in, into my society. They learn English they, they, and the children integrate with my children. Not a problem at all. I am a European. We are, if we leave the EU tomorrow, I am still a European. We will still be in the Eurovision Song Contest. We will still play football <laughs> in Europe. 
We will still have every well, Eurovision. Israel right? is in the Eurovision Song Contest. Figure that one out. Oh, I see. Right. Australia is. Saying, right. But the whole thing is a socialist experiment. There's, there's oh, no God, so is the NHS. How's that working out for you? The NHS is a socialist experiment. Oh, please tell me that you understand that the NHS is a so is socialist. Oh, because because uh, uh, Narin, uh, Narin Bevan, the guy that, that, that actually created the NHS, was a Labour in 1947, 1948. Because it's Labour, then, like, it's the Julian Hour crown... The reason why the Tories won't attack the NHS... No, let, let's not, let, let's, let's let's not get concept. beyond this. You do understand the concept of the NHS, don't you? Yeah, free, free at the point of... Um, because? Because what? Because, how is it funded? It, it's funded by me and you, by taxes. Right, and it's, then, it it's then but free... It's a behemoth, it, 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 it's, it's a behemoth like the, 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 the trains taxes... So they pay like fifteen pounds for a plaster. They pay like twenty pounds for a needle, and another one will pay one hundred and twenty pounds for a needle. It, it, the reason why the NHS doesn't work is, is because it is political. It shouldn't be. It's it, it, the NHS God, should are, be. It's, it's like um, should be a, should be a world. It, it should be our it's like listening our, to our a, view a, to the world. All these ideas the get put into a magic mix, and they just get spun up, and you're just right. spewing them it, out. But, but you're not making any. NHS, you're not making any sense. Sir. Well. Unless you don't think that we should have uh, an, uh, a health service. It should be replaced by um, insurance. Right. The NHS is, is a, a jewel in our crown that we should show globally this is the way, this is how you do it, yeah? No, but, but, it, but that's the opposite of what you just said. No. It is. You're putting words in my mouth. No, I am not. A behemoth, you called it, and it doesn't work, and they they spend uh, 50 quid in a plaster. That's exactly what you just said. How can that How can that be a shining example of anything, apart from stupidity, as you've described it? This is what I'm... This is the problem that I have with this decision. Oh, the people made a, uh, uh, an informed decision about Brexit. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. People didn't know what they were what they were voting for they had no clue they just all got caught up in a moment they were invited to blame the wrong things for whatever ails them because their lives don't match the, uh, the shiny lifestyles of the people in the magazines or off the telly and they're not famous and so they thought well who can we blame it for and then uh, you know who came along and said well it's a blooming foreigners isn't it i'm a nutcase it's about these unelected officials and people said, oh, yeah, that's right, unelected officials, having absolutely no concept of what, uh, for how the EU actually works. And if you've, uh, I'll say it again, if you voted to get um, less poor, then how's that working out for you? I, I can't stand it, Russell, I really can't. But um, thanks for uh, to trying to uh, make me understand. I refuse to learn my lesson. Um, the will of the people. Gosh, it's just, uh, it's just so meaningless. It's infuriating, apart from anything else. I mean, the people... You've met the people. What do you think of them? You think they're bright, intelligent? The, the people shouldn't be allowed to tie their own shoelaces. <laughs> Unless that's a controversial thing to say, in which case I apologise. Seven Oaks, Mark. Hi, um, I'd just like to ask... Please come uh, closer to the Brexit. phone. Um, because there's a great deal of disagreement about whether to Brexit or how to Brexit, um, do you think it'll be a, it will be a sensible scientific approach to experiment with <laughs> a single region first as a pilot study to see how things go? What do you mean by single region? Well, the West Midlands was the region that had the biggest Brexit vote. Uh, oh, yeah, let's build a wall around the M25 and, uh, and everybody inside the M25 can keep their money and stay in as they wanted to. And, um, and similarly in, uh, around uh, Manchester and uh, Liverpool and uh, Leeds, I would imagine. Most of the cities voted stay in. Mm. So everybody that voted out... Then uh, yeah, we'll build a wall around the uh, the the, the well-off and uh, well-integrated places that voted to stay in, and they can all keep their money. And then uh, the rest of the country that voted out, they can uh, keep whatever they make. How does that sound? Well, 
yeah, I don't think they really need to build a wall because they 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 they're coming to some sort of uh, different arrangement regarding Northern Ireland and its border. So they, they have no idea what to do about Northern Ireland. They're going to stay within the EU. It's going to be without the EU. They're going to have a wall. They're going to have a border. There's going to be nothing there. They've got no clue. Well, I don't think there's going to be a wall, and uh, people won't uh, stand for that. Um, I, uh, the sort of thing they might want to do is to um, concentrate on in uh, dealing with invoices for as far as the uh, as far as the, the the duty is concerned rather than trying to stop people uh, cross border shopping because cross border shopping has existed in Ireland for for forever so anyway yeah I, but it is it is a thorny problem if we are going to leave the EU then you then there has to be a border between us and the EU of course there does otherwise what's it does it's meaningless and if you can just uh, uh, casually sally over the border without um, a buy or leave then um, then uh, it, it then there is no difference between us and the EU well I mean people come here on the holiday from all over the world uh, in a casual manner well no not really it depends where you come from well from from Europe that would be the well, case yeah of course yeah that's because we're in the EU uh, but yes. wait till we're out like, of the it EU. It was roughly like that before we were in the EU. I mean, they're, 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 I, I understand that their problems. Uh, yeah, well, that was different times, though. Mark. That was di that was different times, yeah. as you were about to uh, say, the security and all of the rest of it. Well, I, I don't think there's a security issue between us and Europe in the sense that we're afraid that they're going to invade us or be ter Well, I don't know. It depends who you talk to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, uh, those those. Okay, there was a 750-year war between England and France, but that finished a long time yeah. ago. And uh, the net result of it, in terms of change, was the small... It was very small, it was the Channel Islands, and this country got the Channel Islands as a result of a war that the French won. So that tells you how brilliant war is at sorting things out, and how futile it is. So I, I don't think there's any possibility of that, but... Uh, that sort of thing happening in Europe, and uh, and so I think that. Well, that's a pretty bold claim, there, Mark. I mean, Europe has a uh, history of being um, riven with uh, war. Yes, but the EU Just, has sorted that well, out. They, they they would claim that. Now that may or may not be uh, true, but uh, things seem to be breaking up, and the uh, f the far right are on the rise, and. Um, there is a division wherever you look. Everybody hates everybody else. I think that uh, to call an, an end to all wars in Europe seems uh, a bit premature. But anyway, uh, fingers crossed. Thanks a lot, Mark. Uh Studio calls flashing up on the indicator. Yes, uh, this one in uh, St John's Wood. Oh, Peter. Yes, Nick. Peter. Nick, I want to just comment on Brexit. I mean... If you'd go back to when Cameron went to the EU to negotiate a fairer deal for the UK... Oh, David Cameron. No! Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, give him a bit of respect. <laughs> no. Instead of blowing raspberries in the microphone. Yeah. Um, when David Cameron went to the EU, he tried to get a good deal for the for the UK, and the EU was not willing to do it. Yeah. But now... It wouldn't have made any it, difference, because people didn't base their opinion on what a good deal would look like. Oh, well, they did. No, they didn't. Because he, he wanted control of the borders, which is a very important reason for pe why people voted for brexit so they were wrong in that regard because we can't we, we the people the number of people that have come in are the exact number that we want because we have full employment in this country there's no getting around it no, you, the figures you've got it, add right, up you've got it wrong your whole argument is wrong go ahead you are arguing from the point of view that if we didn't take in uh, people from abroad we couldn't run our restaurants and our taxes and whatever it is that you think uh, they're running but actually the argument is more if we controlled the immigration we wouldn't have this exponential ex expansion of more and more places like uh, restaurants we've got enough restaurants <laughs> more, you know <laughs> That's what, about what, the what? stupidest thing I've ever heard, Peter. There's plenty enough. There, there are exactly enough restaurants as are bringing in the money, and if uh, a restaurant isn't bringing in the money, then it closes. 
Well, no. A lot so, of, uh, so a how many? A what, lot perce- of what percentage? Are well, that's right. Have... Yeah, they do. It's a terrible business to be in. If you want to, um, well, you just it, said, you just if you said want to become what? a millionaire, start as a billionaire and open a restaurant. No, it used to be a very good business, but recently, no, it's always been a lot dodgy. of the big names like Jamie Oliver, etc. They're, they're closing their restaurants down because they're losing money. I mean, I'm picking on restaurants. I could have picked on anything that you use foreign workers for. It is yeah, but it's not the foreign workers that's the problem. That is a separate issue, which is the uh, the ca- catastrophic recession that we are going to still be trying to climb our way out of in 50 years' time. And the, well, that's, uh, that's the stagnant what, wages that's a and the... Conversation. No, it's not. You're it's the same one. We're talking about Brexit now. We're talking about why we... we You're, in- you seem to be uh, equating restaurants' failure with their employment of foreign people. No. That's what you just did. No, I didn't Well, then explain that. what it was that, that, that made you bring up the um, Jamie Oliver and then say that he's failing and he's a, a big ex- employer I, you, of foreign you, people. You, you were saying that restaurants have always been a bad business. They have. Answer. No, they haven't. They, that, Jamie Oliver became a Oh, God. A it's got nothing to do with Jamie Oliver, Peter. The restaurant trade is very, very uh, precarious. How can you not know that? Well, how come, then, there are so many coffee bars in England? How come you've got uh, narrows? I'm not coffee- saying that restaurants will all close inevitably. I'm saying that for every ten restaurants that open, probably eight or nine fail. Anyway, we have a lot of coffee bars full of, run by 100% as far as I'm concerned, foreigners. We don't, I don't, none of them speak English as yeah. far as I can see. Right. And well, they do. They do. They do, they do, they do speak English. We don't speak their language. They always speak ours, but that's the case with everybody in the world. We refuse to speak their language. We just shout loudly at them in English, expecting them to... Um, to uh, adopt our language, regardless of where we actually happen to be standing. I think that's a very good system. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, nothing uh, arrogant about that. Go ahead. No, there's nothing arrogant about it. Yeah, a little bit, tiny bit. Well, no, there was a thing called Esperanto that the world was trying to get its head around, but it never worked. At least this way, everybody could communicate with each other in the whole world. No, nothing nothing arrogant about that. Everybody should speak English. Well, they've got to speak something. Well, I think that I think the French what, speak what French, and the, choose, and the and well, whichever language they happen to speak in whichever no, in, speak in English, whichever so. country. Oh, yeah, geez, okay. You started out sort of relatively intelligent, making uh, what might uh, at a first glance appear to be uh, good points, but now you're just being stupid. I'm, um, you know, it's uh, it's um, impolite to call your callers stupid, but uh, you know, if only they'd act a little less stupid. Yeah, we go to Germany and we shout loudly at them in English, but there's nothing arrogant about that. Goodness me, no. Why would they be speaking German in Germany? <laughs> uh, you know, just when you think, yeah, there's, oh, this, this guy's bright, he's going to make some good points, then you think, oh, well, no, another one of those. Northampton, hello, John. Hello, mate, how are you? Uh, okay. You know what, I voted Brexit and I knew exactly what I was doing. In 1975, I voted at the referendum when we joined the European Economic Community. I thought I knew what I was voting for then, but it seems I didn't know. I couldn't see what was going to happen, and I've just seen it happen ever since then, and I'm not happy about it. I mean, we had people working in our restaurants many, many years ago from different parts of the world, not just within the EU, but before we joined the EU. So I don't see a problem there. I think it's all about controlling our borders. I mean, if it means we're going to have to have, to have people work in our restaurants, we've also got to have all the criminal element come over here when we've got 4,500 EU citizens in our prisons and that's costing us a lot of money. Oh, we have plenty enough for criminals in this uh, country and, and, we, and we export a great number of them to uh, north, south, east and west. A great number of our uh, top criminals are living in Spain. Prisoners across 26 countries but i'm not really interested in what goes on over there i'm only com- com- i'm only interested in what happens okay so how, how many restaurants would you like to make w- a right who, would you like to say see mm. shut down would i like to say what how many restaurants would you like to see shut down oh none of them you know but this is well, then who's, about, go- who's going all, to I mean, who, I've then been who been is going to do the work john i've been in a big ukip supporter for many years now answer the I question don't... if you don't want any restaurants to close down and if we can agree that um, 
I don't know, 80% of the uh, number of people who will work, at least in London, in the uh, restaurant trade and the hotel trade are uh, f f from abroad. Who's going to do those jobs? This country's joined the EU. Listen to me, John. Who's going to do those jobs? The same people. The same people, it, but we control it. What we do, if it means that we're going to have, to have people who work in our restaurants, we've got to add the criminals over here as well, because we're all part of the EU, I don't, I don't find that acceptable. Criminals? What are you talking about? Well, what, what? We're importing criminals? Yeah, of course we are, if they're, within the, if they're EU citizens. Wait, wait, I mean, do you remember young Alice Gross who was murdered uh, by... Wait, OK, you can bring up any kind of uh, specific example you like, but it doesn't prove a point. More people come here from outside the EU than come here from inside the EU, over which we have complete control. But because we need all of those people, and the evidence for that is full employment, then they will continue to come, even if we had uh, complete control, total and utter control over every single person that came into this country, we'd still have to be bringing in the same number as come in now. Otherwise, hotels would close, food packing industry would close, taxes would, uh, taxi companies would close, restaurant trade would close, coffee shops would close. 80% of, of the money that we make in this country is the services industry. And outside of the banking racket and uh, accounting and uh, architects and so on, it's people going into uh, shops and restaurants and hotels and spending money they haven't got on stuff they don't need. That's what we make, that's what we do for a living in this country. All of which is uh, facilitated by people working for low wages from abroad because we don't want to do those jobs. So who would do those jobs if we stopped those people coming in? Nobody. Because we're all already doing other jobs. It's just such a daft argument. So we have complete control. Okay, so we can decide precisely how many people come in. It would be the exact same number as come in now. Because all of those people are working. Unless you want the complete collapse of the thing that we do to make money in this country. The services industry. And that would be shooting yourself... I mean, talk about... Um, uh, um, shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, that just that would make absolutely no sense at all. Oh, we'd be poor, but at least we'd uh, be surrounded by fewer foreign people. It's, it's just... This is the problem that I have with the Brexit. Is nobody has thought about it for a second. But I, I suppose that's the speed at which things happen these days. You read something on Facebook and it chimes with um, your uh, prejudices, and you think, oh, yeah, OK, that's the truth, and, I'm not g and I refuse to listen to a single other word, and I'll just keep spouting it over and over and over again. The EU is, uh, is uh, run by um, un unelected um, bureaucrats, and they've all got it in for us complete misunderstanding of the situation and if only we had control over our borders we would uh, have a fewer people come in well we could have fewer people come in but then an entire industry would collapse and that wouldn't make us better off it would just make us poorer and that's the problem that I have with the vote. It was way too complicated to allow the public, who wasn't prepared to look at the issue at all, not for a single second, to vote on. We should never have been asked that question. It's above our pay grade. Dude! Everything's okay. The Germans are going to come to our rescue because a group of German business leaders and politicians has called for the EU to persuade Britain to reverse Brexit. What? <laughs> but hang on. They want to do that by offering a comprehensive deal on immigration and free movement. No more foreigners. Apart from the ones that we need to do the jobs that we don't want to do ourselves, which is the exact same number that come here anyway. Under the slogan, Exit from Brexit, a new deal for Britain and the EU, 
The group of seven German business leaders and politicians warned that Germany must do more to prevent losing its most valuable partner within the EU. They love us. They really love us. They said, basically, we want the EU to offer the deal that David Cameron was looking for before the referendum. <laughs> Too blooming late. They said, we want to offer Britain the right to stop people who have no jobs from entering the country and entering its social welfare system. Now, that's exactly like uh, when the government says that we're going to give you uh, 2.8 billion p new, uh, new money for the NHS, 2.8 billion pounds. But it's the exact same amount of money that they were going to give us uh, already that they'd previously announced. They're just going to call it something else, and uh, it will uh, appear new to us. Because we can do that anyway. Under EU rules, we have the right to kick out anyone that becomes a burden on the welfare state, as in doesn't have a job and is claiming benefits. We have the right to kick them out. Now, other countries in the EU do that. It's just that we've decided not to do that, for whatever reason. I don't know. Get David Cameron on the phone. Get Theresa May on the phone. She's mostly responsible. You can kick somebody out if they haven't found a job within six months, if they become a burden on the welfare state. Kick them out. It's just that we've never used that. Now, these Germans, they said that the aim of the initiative was to stop Brexit from happening and exit from Brexit. But they were also uh, prepared to push for a better deal if Britain decided to leave. One of Germany's leading economists said that benefits should be paid by EU citizens' home countries even if they uh, moved to another member state. So if we went uh, over uh, to uh, Spain and tried to claim unemployment benefit in Spain, then Britain would pay for it and vice versa. Happy now? There you are. Problem solved. Brexit is cancelled. Everybody's happy. Uh. Um, let's have Perth. Jason. Mac. Must be very, very cold. Must be very cold uh, yes. this evening. Bal Baltic is the sort of kind of the informal <laughs> term to use. Um, just kind of, kind yes. of echoing what you were saying, is, uh, I think this all really boils down to that when people get skint and people are angry, they'll just blame it on someone on something else. Yeah. So I think they should time, actually blame it on luck because that's what life yeah. is. Well, Ninety-nine percent of life is luck. Rather and blame it on Johnny Foreigner with his foul-smelling garlic and so forth. Let's, why don't we look at how we've got to this point for the start? So, there was massive mismanagement in terms of the government, whether it was Labour or Tories or whatever, and as soon as people get skint, they get angry, and if you jump on the right thing, as the previous chairman of said, he's been a UKIP supporter, obviously they're just kind of blaming it on foreign people. And as you were saying as well, which is what is even more embarrassing, is that we can already deport foreigners that are here to work with or, or whatever, but then they don't really realise that the vast majority of people that come to this country to work and live are outside the EU. And yeah, more, more than from inside the EU, yeah. Exactly. And this is what's dangerous and what's really, really scary, because people are just thinking that, just a simple Brexit vote is going to solve all their problems. Yeah. And we all know that it's going to affect the working class man. But it was the working class man that voted to leave. Well, exactly. It's the same thing that's really happened with, uh, with Donald Trump in uh, America. People are persuaded to... Simple populism, man. Exactly. And populism equates to, in these two instances, blaming the people below you on the ladder for your own, exactly. uh, for whatever ails you, as opposed to what you should be doing is blaming the people above you on the ladder. Exactly. So, for example, right, look now at Scotland. Scotland has a declining birth rate and a nation population. So Scotland, as obviously a part of the UK, needs sort of foreign investment. Well, not investment, but workers. Well, it needs for but workers, exactly. It needs young people. Exactly. Because, well, uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just the cold weather, but uh, Scottish people aren't having uh, a hot uh, Caledonian uh, interface with each other. Disgusting. Yeah, you need to produce more babies. The iron is, though, is that because, obviously, you'll speak to the German that was talking about controlling the bars and that, but the iron is, though, that if he breaks his leg when he's working, he's probably on the chance of being treated by a foreign doctor who is happy living here, had a family, paid his taxes, but then it's like, no, he's fine who's looking after me and I just think it's simple dangerous things don't blame pe foreign people that are coming to work 
blame the mismanagement of our own governments that have been elected time and time again. David Cameron to give him a break. He was the one to start this whole mess, and as you were saying, I completely agree that the British public are not well informed enough to actually make that vote. Boris Johnson. Here's, 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 here's how, here's here's how ill informed we are. A year later, over a year <laughs> later, they're still saying the same wrong things. They haven't. And Boris Johnson. They Boris haven't Johnson. investigated the issue for a single second. Boris Johnson, like, he, he's obviously not a stupid guy, but he's gone from doing the Brexit stuff and saying really, really grim stuff about Libya and, like, about that poor lassie that's across in, uh, um, <laughs> like, Iran or Iraq, sorry. But he's still in a massive position of power. But why don't we focus on the people that are mis-selling us really wrong, really, really actually just really bad figures and lies rather than turning each other and saying, oh, no, listen, no, no listen, I'm those pose guys around the corner. It was the banks to start with. Like, we saw them doing it on the TV. Like, there was a massive amount of crash. But then it's, oh, no, like, it must be all these dodgy people that are foreign. This it is, was the is, banks that made ex this. This is exactly what I'm saying. We have been persuaded, and, and it's a work of rare genius, really, among the uh, the the political and business elite to have us all blame the people beneath us on the ladder and if it wasn't um, foreigners from the EU it'd be foreigners from outside the EU and if it wasn't foreigners from outside the EU it'd be benefits cheats and um, the unemployed and uh, there's always somebody be beneath you that's the problem which is a neat way of taking your eye off the people above you who are actually the problem. They're the ones that are keeping you down rather than the people beneath you who are dragging you down. Uh, but it's, it's always more satisfying to pick on people beneath you because, uh, you know, by definition you are above them and it's e they're easier to pick on. They're a more identifiable group rather than just uh, some a small group of uh, amorphous individuals who work in the top floors of the shiny um, tower blocks making decisions that will that will screw you up for 50 years 50 years two decades without earnings growth the national debt will not be under control for 50 years according to the institute for fiscal studies the IFS said it was truly astonishing that average earnings, average earnings could still be below their 2008 level by 2022. They said the net national debt may not fall to its pre-crisis levels of 40% of national income until well past the 2060s, by which time uh, most of us will be dead. But, you know, at least no banker was made poor by the recession that they caused, so, uh, you know, that's one good thing. Let's have um, Danoon. Donald. Hi there, Ian. Ian's not here at the moment. Can I put you on hold? Uh, you certainly can. It'll be a while. He'll be back on Sunday. Or you can speak to me in the meantime. I will speak to you right now. Yes, Donald. Well, I'm actually concerned about us losing the EMA and the EBA. I was I voted to remain in the vote in the nationalist vote for uh, UK to be part of the UK and Europe, and I am now really concerned. I was looking at PMQs and <laughs> the way a lot of acronyms three. flying about here. I think that us losing the um, the the medical uh, well, these people were their and jewel in our crown for Europe. Mm, yeah, both that... of them. That's not too many jobs that are going. I mean, there will be a, a halo effect of other jobs that uh, will, you know, companies like to uh, base their, uh, at least some of their operations around the regulators, like the medical, uh, pharmaceutical industry and the banking people. But, you know, I'm sure they'll be uh, delighted with their lifestyle in um, Paris and particularly, uh, where are they going? Amsterdam. Groovy. Yeah. They'll be um, having a high old time in Amsterdam. Want to score some pot? I'm sure they'll love it there. Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about that. It's uh, if if Honda and Volkswagen up sticks and decide to go, or HSBC. That's when the trouble will start, Donald. 
Well, let's get back to it. <laughs> Donald Trump, every single little thing he does is uh, astonishing. Some of it's really, really funny, but most of it's just, uh, you know, you just uh, look at him with a uh, slack jaw and go, what? How can he not know that Time Magazine's Person of the Year doesn't mean that you are the best person of the year? <laughs> That's not what the award is. It's not even an award. And it's not that you're the best person, just that you're the most newsworthy. If we'd been doing it in uh, the 1940s, it would have been Hitler. It's just me, me, me. The one that matters is me. I'm the only one that matters. To you. Just, just take anything that he says and put it in the mouth of any other politician and you'd be, uh, they'd be kicked out of office. I mean, can you imagine if Theresa May said something like... I'd like to punch him in the face. She wouldn't be uh, a prime minister anymore. I don't think he's a very nice person. Donald Trump is a very nice person. Oh, okay. Like I said. Um, let's have uh, Hackney. Hello, Richard. Hello there. Hello there. Um, <laughs> I, I like the way as well that the alternative to Donald Trump for Man of the Year is Vladimir, Vladimir Putin. Putin I, mean, yeah. I mean, just cut out the middleman. Just go straight to the source. <laughs> yes. Um, I was feeling quite chipper until you, you started reading out the news and the statistics of what was going to happen after, after Brexit, and now I'm feeling a bit gloomy. Oh, um, no. <laughs> Cheer up, mate. It might never happen. Oh, no, it that's might. right. It already has. It already has. I do like the fact, though, that you've made the point that we could already control immigration. Of course. Um, and everyone's asking, well, if we could, why weren't we? Well, let's ask Theresa May, because she was responsible. The answer is very simple. Because the number of, the very, very tiny number of people who are abusing the system, it would cost more to catch them than we would save in catching them. It's just not, not cost efficient. Well, they would, we would be better off spending that money on trying to catch our own people who are abusing the system because there's exactly. plenty more of them. Exactly. If you're motivated enough to get up off your backside, travel halfway across Europe and come to the land of opportunity, you don't want to sit around on the dole and slough. Of course not. Um, so that, And the same thing is when we do bring in these wonderful new border controls, it'll be exactly <laughs> the same thing. We'll make up all of these new laws and then we won't bother to enforce any. No, well, we'll uh, pr probably by either just um, laziness or ineptitude. Mm. What do you think about the uh, Irish border, though? I mean, how are we going to oh. do that? We can't have a hard border. Well, it's we even, can't have a soft border, but, but, but I we don't can't know. have no border. Okay, why, why can't we have a hard border? I mean, I know that people say, oh, it's because the uh, hard men will come out of the uh, shadows and they'll start killing people again. But the, there's borders between countries, uh, the, between every country on Earth. It's written into the Good Friday Agreement. Yeah, well, whatever. And I, if I, the I Good really... Friday Agreement goes, then the power-sharing arrangement well, goes, yeah, but and I, then but we're back to 20 years ago. But why? Why do people have to kill each other just because you have to present your passport at a border? Well, I don't know. We could ask the Foreign Secretary, but he's just done an interview saying that he didn't realise the full implications of Brexit on Ireland until a few months ago. <laughs> so, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. Um, you know what it's going to end up being? It's going to be a soft border. We're going to outsource it. Uh, the software will be written by Capita. And the employees will probably be someone from Group 4. Yeah, G4S, yeah. Yeah, and it's all going to work incredibly. Oh, I'm, I can't wait. It'll be a, a, a model of um, efficiency. Yeah. Um, my thought is, um, I, I noticed that you're doing the, the BBC bias thing. With what? Who's calling up on Brexit. Did what? you not hear that about the BBC? There was a question at question time. Uh, a bright young gentleman raised his head and said... Why is nobody addressing the BBC bias about Brexit phone-ins? Because whenever they have a Brexit phone-in, every time they go to someone who supports Brexit, it's always someone really stupid. <laughs> Why are they doing that? I, I just take the calls as they come in. That's beyond my control. I can't put, force uh, people to call. No. Um, well, have you thought about the other side of the Brexit? Equation. I mean, obviously, there's this there's this huge rump of very 
very angry people who just want to to be out at all costs and because it's I don't, well, I, I don't think that's actually what they want they just want their life to be better and they've been persuaded yeah. by a few oily characters that their life will be better if we yeah. leave the eu but the, well, but that's well, just not true are you saying that they think that any change is a good change i mean things aren't working now so let's kick up the place because how can it get any worse no, I think that they, they, they it's almost the opposite of that. I, I think that they they see what's happening now and they think that that is a change. What they want is to go back to before the change, which would be, I don't know, it depends how old they are, the 40s, when, um, yeah, you, really. you, you know, there was no, uh, the yes, we had no bananas, there was no butter in the uh, shops, we you couldn't have any chocolate, and bombs were raining down from the sky. The good old days. Yeah, but you didn't have to lock your back door, mate. Oh, God, yeah, that's right, because there was no crime then. Sure. Well, you didn't have a back door to bomb <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, But what about the oily characters? What's in it for them? Because I noticed... A career? I don't know whether this is... I don't know whether this is symbolic or not, but we officially leave the EU on the same day that the new stricter regulations EU-wide against tax evasion come in. You know, if there's one thing that the EU are doing that you can actually point to and, and say that they are way ahead of for where we should be is cracking down on uh, what an ordinary average person in the street would call tax cheats. Exactly. Now, if you're, say, I don't know, a person of, of high political power, and I don't, I don't mean just a politician, I mean, you know, the editor of a, a daily newspaper yeah. or the owner of a television set, somebody who can, you know, change public opinion. Mm -hmm. And most of your wealth is offshore. Yep. On the Bahamas, in American dollars, and you're living off the interest. Um, it's not a good thing for someone to look into your tax affairs. I think that, also, that, I, I think that, that that's it in a nutshell. That's the reason why our uh, media, uh, our right-wing media, is so aggressively against Europe. It's because... If, uh, because they would have much less success in trying to play one country off against another if all of the countries mm. were speaking with one voice. Much easier, it's the same thing with um, Vladimir Putin, much easier to have countries fighting with each other each so other. that you can say, well, France said that uh, they'd only charge me 10% in tax, so uh, maybe I'll go there then. And if everybody's looking at their neighbour, nobody's looking at you, especially if you happen to be Russia. Yeah. Um, Cur it's, it's curious that um, the, the 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 Russian the Russians and the controllers of um, the right wing media in this country seem to be speaking as with one voice. Well, what I noticed is that I mean, after we had the the, the announcement of Brexit and the the pound crumbles, immediately um, offshore trusts came in and started snapping up British businesses because they were now. Uh, a third cheap. Uh, yeah, the discount. But Black Friday. <laughs> yes, 25% exactly. off. Yeah. Um, I was, you know, uh, at first I thought, well, it's a bit too much of a conspiracy theory to say we're seeing that again, because we are now deliberately car crashing the economy. The pound is going down. Our businesses are getting cheaper and cheaper. I don't, I don't think it's... De are you saying that the government is deliberately crashing well, the economy? I, I, I think that's, going to that's do just that a function. Until I, until I heard... Um, is John Redwood a government minister? No, he's just a backbencher, isn't he? Oh, the giant brain. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly, the man of Wales. Um, same, he's, he's now said... He's, a, he's also a... Um, an investment consultant yeah. and he's told his clients to take their money out of Britain <laughs> so that they can then buy up once it's it's it, so it can be used more efficiently in the future right so you have a Tory you know a high-profile Tory advising people to take money out of Britain yeah don't bet on Britain whatever you do don't bet on Britain um, and that's the way it is because <laughs> Well, that's Nothing not... will hurt these people. That's... I mean, if you've got a garage full of Bentleys and you go campaigning door to door with your nanny, it doesn't <laughs> matter what happens in the UK. You know, it's not going to touch you. Well, it's not so far beyond the realms of um, uh, believability. I mean, we've got our own international trade secretary mm -hmm. who's calling the uh, companies 
the, in uh, this country, fat and lazy. Now he's the, he's the, he's supposed to be their spokesperson. <laughs> and he's calling them fat and lazy, and uh, too um, idle and a poor sign to um, engage in the foreign trade. Well. I guess he should know. I don't know. Well, maybe, um, <laughs> yeah. He is an expert. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, if he's the Trade Secretary, it's probably the well, last... that's what I'm saying, yeah. The International Trade Secretary, Liam Fox, accused companies of not wanting to export their goods abroad uh, because they're fat and lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, was it um, David Davis who says, we have a new tech company opening up every hour? I want to half that. Uh, that sounds like something that David Davis yeah. would say, yeah. Yeah. Um, at, at the root of it all, I just don't feel that the government is acting in good faith over this. I don't think they're acting in our best interests. No, no. Can I give you a quick example of that with this whole um, European capital of culture uh, business? Yeah, all right. How do you how do you stand on that? Because I, you know, I mean, was it the EU throwing the rattle out of the pram? I, I don't care. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. I mean, isn't Hull the current? Um or was it last year? I think it was Hull, wasn't it? No, I think the, I think the last one was Liverpool. Right. Um, it's a big thing. And they but not really. It, not really. No, no they reckoned it, it was worth about $980 million in terms of increased tourist revenue. Mm, yeah, 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 I don't know. I'd, I'd like to see those uh, figures um, in uh, black and white. I, I don't believe that for a minute. So I'll write them down for you. OK, then. <laughs> pop, <laughs> um, pop them in the post. Yeah. Um... Currently, we have this big thing because uh, uh, who would have thought it? We can't be EU capital of culture if we're not in the EU. I mean, how how unbelievable is that? But but honestly, who cares? I mean, as, as a point of just how we're not being dealt with in good faith. Currently, we're being told this is the EU acting out of peak. Now, a year ago, the culture secretary. Um, What's her name? Karen Bradley advised Cabinet that there wasn't a cat and house chance of us being allowed to go ahead with this. And we should withdraw because otherwise cities would be spending thousands and thousands of pounds on useless bids. Yeah. That was her advice to Cabinet. That was October 2016. November 2016, Boris Johnson wrote her a letter saying effectively, if we withdraw, if the British government withdraws, then it will play very badly with Brexit. So just keep shtum. I keep spending the money. <laughs> well, that's it. What they did, she then put out an addendum to the bid in December 2016, a little two-page paragraph saying, all money spent is at your own risk. The one thing that will not happen is the government will not reimburse you if this doesn't go ahead because of Brexit. So her backside was covered. And then they kept quiet and they just let those cities spend the money for the next year. And then when they submitted their plans and Europe went, but why are you showing us this? Because <laughs> you're not going to be yeah. in the EU. Hmm. Suddenly it's the Europeans' fault. Yeah, you can't have your cake and eat it. Well, exactly. But, I mean, surely at the very least, when the culture secretary put out that note saying money will not... There could have just been like a one-sentence thing. It is the opinion of this department that you will not be eligible. Yeah, well, that's, that sounds like, that sounds like joined-up thinking. That sounds like uh, planning. It sounds like honesty. Well, oh, yeah, OK, the H word. <laughs> if you want to just throw the H word around. Well, what can I say? I mean, surely it's the very least. Oh, it sounds like intelligence to me. I mean, do we uh, are we uh, in uh, possession of so much money that we don't know what to do with it? No. No. No, so, we've gone down. We are now officially the sixth richest country. We were the fifth richest country this time last year. We're now the sixth. Yeah, well, just wait. We're, we're the sick man of Europe again. Yes. Again. Yeah. I know. Painful. Here, Richard, I've got to go because I'm past the break, but thanks a lot. Nick Abbott. I enjoy working with people. This message says, voted Brexit, but even though I don't like the idea of more political union, I now realise that the cost to us is too high, especially with our politicians being so woefully inept. <laughs> woefully inept? Are you thinking of anybody in particular? No one said that IQ is the only measure of... of, um, of uh, uh, um, 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 Mentioning uh, their names. 
It says, um, I wish that we could vote again quickly. In the meantime, we can all help by uh, making that bit of extra effort to buy British goods, protecting jobs and raising tax. British goods? Well, the best of luck with that. We don't make anything here anymore. Well, we, 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 we make uh, w weapons of mass destruction. We're particularly good at that. I mean, if you want to kill a lot of people really quickly, then uh, we will sell to you as long as you pass our uh, strict uh, ethical foreign policy, which is that uh, you can afford it. We absolutely refuse to sell weapons of mass destruction to anybody that can't afford them. That is the nature of our ethical foreign policy. <laughs> British goods. I mean, even things that uh, fly the British flag, even things that will have the British flag uh, pinned on them, aren't British. I mean, stuff that you think is British through and through, that you um, associate with this country, just like um, Her Majesty the Queen and Corgi Dogs. <laughs> they will be owned by the Saudis or the Swiss or the Indians or the Chinese or the Americans. We don't own anything anymore. And the very few things that uh, are um, Britishly British, made by British companies, owned by British people, will be made in China. What we do for a living now, apart from uh, weapons of mass destruction, is um, shopping, buying stuff we don't need with money we haven't got. That and, uh, you know, those, uh, those nice people in the banking racket. No! Those people. Ealing, hello, Tet. Nick, um, it's, it's, it's actually a relief to listen to some of the things that are being said here because um, I think the real problem that's made us go Brexit is we've got this incredible sense of entitlement and the leaders of the Brexit campaign have enabled it so that we blame everybody else for our woes in Britain rather than ourselves. Now, I'm an immigrant, okay, late 50s, when I was a little boy, I used to make, you know, model aircraft and things like that. And, and just, just in aircraft alone, there were companies like Avro, Bristol, De Havilland, Supermarine, uh, uh, so many of them. We don't have a manufacturing base anymore. When I was a little boy, Britain was right up there in things like uh, motorbikes, Norton, BSA, yeah. Triumph. I mean, we used to make cars as well. They, did, they didn't work, <laughs> but we made a lot of them. Nick, I haven't even got there yet. And then the country that had a nuclear bomb dropped on it comes along with a self-starting motor. Um, I think it, it was either Honda or Suzuki that did it, and our industry got wiped out. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, um, I remember that, again, when I was kind of late teen. Britain's output was 30-something percent from the manufacturing sector. Now it's a smidgen over 10. 80 percent of our economy is the services sector, which is hotels, restaurants, shops, coffee Shop. shops. And um, the, the, you know, like the, uh, the white-collar services, banking, accounting, lawyering, Absolutely. that stuff. Yeah. Now, the, the, the thing that the, especially the right-wing media amps up and weaponizes to get people to vote Brexit, which is the hoodoo about immigrants. It's a, I'm a person kind of of immigrant stock. Even in a boarding school in England, I think that you'll discover that immigrants work a little bit harder. Well, that's a, the attitude, of, not, the attitude not, of entitlement isn't there. Not only do they they work harder, but they take uh, less benefits, and their children are smarter. How scary is well, that? Their children are speaking in a second language, and they're <laughs> and they're still beating us. <laughs> you see, so so I mean, when it comes to things like that, it, it just makes me feel as if um, the leaders of of the whole Brexit enterprise have taken the public for a ride. Yeah, that's absolutely they, what's they happening. Can't, they can't afford to tell them the truth anymore. But I am I, now I don't think that they would recognise the truth if it came and slapped them in the face. Well, I, I, I'm praying for a miracle. 
<laughs> I know, no, but I, I admit, honestly, it's the only thing I can do now because I am looking at the future, the future of my children. My eldest is in a final year at university. The youngest is just about to enter university. And I'm thinking, that's it. I, you know, I've had the glory days with Britain. And we are now looking in 10, 15 years' time at being a small island in the North Sea. Yeah, even Australia is calling us insignificant to their interests. We are insignificant to their interests. Australia, I thought they were our friends. It's, it, it really is quite devastating. So <clears throat> there is one other thing, and I, I think this is quite delicate. If I'm, a, I'm of African origin, okay, and when I talk about attitudes towards immigrants and so on, a kind of a native white Brit might think that, you know, I'm not being an honest broker in this. And I think it's very important for, for English people, I, I say English, though I mean British, to talk to other English people about what the future holds. Right now, when, you, when I go into my Sainsbury's local, uh, four months ago, the bargain basement, bog standard um, pattern of butter cost just under a pound. Mm. Yeah, I can, I can, it wasn't very long ago. It was 89p. I used to, uh, there's a, a particular brand no. that used to be significantly cheaper than all of the others, but I, I quite liked it. I didn't see there was anything wrong with it. I, and neither I could I figure out why it was so cheap. But it used to be 89p. Now it's what, one pound twenty, one pound thirty? One pound forty nine. you buy the same thing for. So, I mean, that's a 50% um, increase. Whose salary has gone up by 50% in this time? And it's not just the butter. It's the tomatoes. It's the lettuce. It, and these aren't luxury items by, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. It's what an ordinary person needs for a healthy kind of balance. Yeah, the basics. Diet. You know, the, uh, the the inflation rate it seems to be uh, skewed downwards. Um, the inflation rate that they take doesn't seem to bear any relation to people's actual experience of life. The inflation has gone through the roof, and yet they're claiming that it's, what, 3%, something like that? Um, that it doesn't even take into account housing costs, putting a roof of, the cost of putting a roof over your head, which is, what, <laughs> which is the bulk of what people uh, spend their uh, meagre wages on. So, yeah, we're being uh, we're conned uh, left, right and centre. You know the... Um, uh, Mark Carney, the uh, governor of the Bank of England, he said that Britain could yeah. suffer even higher inflation and weaker growth if yeah. Brexit negotiators fail to agree a transitional deal with the European Union. He said an abrupt exit might result in a further fall in the value of the pound, dent business okay. investment and shut off trade routes, squeezing the UK economy and leading to higher prices and higher interest rates. That's what we're looking at. And we've got the newspapers like the Daily Telegraph who are telling um, their uh, our, our politicians to uh, down tools and just to walk away. It's just they nuts. Are, they are absolutely insane. I mean, here's the thing. It brings me to another point. Is that um, our education curriculum isn't keeping up, isn't paying attention to what's going on. No, we on. are way down the list. Of the PISA list of yeah. um, uh, uh, ability in uh, the core support. subjects. We're, we're down at around uh, the 20s and the 30s. We're supposed to be the sixth Absolutely. largest economy in the world, and we're getting beaten by, um, well, I can't remember which countries are above us, almost all of them. It's embarrassing. Yeah. But, and, and, and here's the thing. It's time now to put economics in with English uh, uh, maths and science as a core subject, because actually, in a democracy, kind of in a modern democracy, he or she who does not understand economics is not fit to vote. <laughs> yeah. it came, well, it's, it's, it's just the way the world has become. Um, I'm, I'm having to can I draw on macroeconomics I studied in two degrees to just pick apart what is really going on in the Well, economy. you yeah. can study it until you're uh, blue in the face or until you're a thousand years old, but it uh, <laughs> it, it will only mean that you disagree with uh, everybody else that's uh, studied it. Economists can't it, agree with uh, it, each other, just like weather but, forecasters but at least, can't. But, sure, but Nick, but at least it gives you a line a, of a base, on the yeah, issue. Some sort of concrete gives you a base. Basis, absolutely, for mm. trying to evaluate what's happening before you and the lies or the truths that politicians are telling you. Yeah, It will so give I you uh, some perspective. Here, Ted, I'm going to have to go, but thanks a lot.
Are you trying to tell me that this is your act? Yes, sadly, this is all I have. Yeah, the uh, governor of the Bank of England uh, said... Oh, no! Yeah, or words to that effect. Yeah, he took one look at the books and he said... <coughs> and that is his official position. He said an ab abrupt exit from the EU might result in a further fall in the value of the pound, dent business investment and shut off trade routes, squeezing the UK economy and leading to higher prices and higher interest rates. He says there's already been some fallout from Brexit, both in terms of investment and the value of the pound, because businesses and markets remain uncertain about the final shape of any deal. They're going, um... Yeah, got no idea what's going to happen, but then nobody does. Including the people that are supposed to be uh, guiding us through this mess. But, you know, he's only the governor of the Bank of England. He is an expert in possession of facts, so therefore we are not remotely interested in anything he has to say. Correct. I'll file that over there in the bin. <laughs> uh, Milton Keynes, Peter. Hello, Nick. I um, don't know whether you recognise my voice, but I've probably spoken to you before. Right, I'm very, um, I'm very pleased with what you said tonight in defence of uh, the arguments of some of the callers you've had. By the way, the previous caller but one who said he thought Liverpool was the last city of culture. Oh, yes. He's wrong. The current one is Hull. Hull, yeah, I, yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, but is it actually doing him any uh, favours? I mean, are people in great numbers going to Hull to experience culture? No. I wouldn't think so. Uh, well, from my experience, um, Linz in Upper Austria, where my mother came from originally, that's the birth, no, that's the hometown of Hitler, by the way, was also city of culture many years ago. Oh, yes. And they managed to get away with it. Well, get away with it, yes, but did it actually uh, present them with the, oh, the yes, economic they benefits? Fantastic exhibitions there, and one thing and the other. And anyway, that's not what I called you for. Right. I'm uh, just trying to correct uh, the last call of the one. Right. Um, why is nobody referring to actual Article 50 clauses, one of which I think was penned by an English or UK citizen, a UK draftsman, to say that we don't have to go ahead with Brexit? <laughs> and, you know? Uh, I mentioned this to yourself, I mentioned this to other people on LBC. They all know about it, but why is nobody doing anything about it? An exit from Brexit. Well, I tell, you, Brexit. I tell you the reason why. Because of the unhinged reaction it will get from um, certain uh, elements of our society. Here's the reason why we're leaving. It's because the people who wanted to leave, who uh, believed all that stuff from the yeah. uh, oily persuaders... They, yes. It became the most important thing in their life. Yes. It's all they wanted. It was, it, they were gripping hold of it as though it were a winning lottery ticket. The people who didn't want to leave, they oh, weren't maybe. that bothered. They weren't that concerned. It didn't um, uh, feature uh, to front of mind uh, 24 hours a day. And that's why 100% of the people that wanted to leave went out to vote and a much smaller percentage of the people that wanted to stay in went out to vote. That's why I knew we were going to leave, because of how obsessed people were that wanted Brexit. Then it's time we got what is known as full facts out to the people and have, whether it's a second referendum or a second whatever you want to call it, a full fact... You're wasting, your, you're wasting your breath. Nobody's interested in facts. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Exactly. No one cares yeah. about facts. They just care about feelings. And what about um, the, c the cost of their future jobs then in this country. Yeah, but that's the future. When the future no, no, arrives, the jobs. when the future arrives and they are poorer than they would have been, they a they won't realise that they're poorer than they would have been because they don't have uh, an identical country to compare ourselves with that would have stayed in. And B, they'll be blaming it on something, something else. Oh, it'll be the, uh, the blooming Jamaicans or the blooming Indians or the blooming uh, working anyway, class and the blooming benefits cheats and the blooming this and that and the other. As you mentioned before, blame the people beneath you, not the people above you. Yeah. Well, I'm just... I mean, I, I am pleased in a way that I've got Austrian parentage, my mother, and I am seriously considering looking at the options of whether I can get Austrian citizenship through her. She's gone now, but um, 
you know, I, I wouldn't mind, like, a lot of Irish people are getting back their Irish passports. So I wouldn't mind getting back an Austrian passport. Well, um, you if can... If the worst uh, comes to the worst, I'll move over there. Yeah, you can, you can uh, s s skip I'm through, a, skip through the here. Edelweiss to your heart's content. Uh, it sounds... Well, I can yodel as well, but the point <laughs> is, I, I was born over here in London in 1944, opposite mm. the Houses of Parliament, St Thomas's Hospital, when just before the V2s started coming in. So I was moved up to Halifax, age zero months upwards, and uh, the war has affected me severely, but I, I am still a UK citizen, but a European at heart. I speak German fluently as a child would. Um, I don't speak technical German. I also have a good knowledge of French. So that gives you an idea of whether I'm a European and or a UK citizen. I don't call myself English, Scottish, Irish or North or whatever, Welsh. Um, that's my demography, if you like. OK, well, uh, it's uh, an inspiration talking to you, Peter. Merci Thanks. Buckets. Thanks a lot, Mary. mate. Uh, I thought that he'd finished, but apparently there was something else. Oh, well, we'll never know. Mark says, uh, can we just clear this up? Liverpool was the last European capital culture in t 2008. Hull is the current UK city of culture, not the European one. Ah, it's the UK city of culture. Not the European capital of culture. Well, so there's competing capitals of culture. <laughs> it's poetry at dawn. I don't think it makes the slightest bit of blooming difference, does it? I mean, who cares? I mean, what's Hull got on? They've got a wind f um, turbine blade in a square. That's all I know. That's all I know. But that's my... Uh, uh, the the... The, the vast, unending pit of ignorance that is me. But are people beating a path to Hull's door to go and experience all of their exciting uh, culture? I'll assume that the answer is... No. Wow! <laughs> you could have driven a bus through that gap. Sometimes it fires off... Uh, most of the time it fires off straight away. Every now and again it has to think about it for a really long time. But, yeah, you know, timing is the essence of uh, amusement. Here is a call in uh, beautiful downtown uh, Leafy Wimbledon. Hello, Tony. Yeah, good, good, well, good morning. How are you? Good, thanks. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, uh, it's something, obviously, with the, the entire nation is gripped by uh, the whole Brexit scenario. But I think part of the whole problem is, is that nobody, like you say, is really paying attention to the facts. I mean, when somebody like the governor of the Bank of England speaks, I don't think we should trivialise it because that, that's the guy that ultimately is perhaps controlling the greater part of the purse strings of the country. And um, I followed some of the things that Mark Carney has said. He's also spoken about the fact that we've got to prepare ourselves for computerization, automation, um, cutting in dramatically onto the employed work workforce. But I think the country in itself needs to actually sort of uh, recognize that Britain has turned its back on manufacturing over a long period of time. Yeah. And even though we've had the service sector, we've seen the financial services industry grow, we can clearly see that that's something that can be moved about the planet quite easily because Very easily. it's predominantly computer-based. Yeah, they shut their laptops so, and get on a plane and uh, by, uh, the, the, by that the, the, the afternoon and the same day, they'll be uh, opening up business in Paris. That's right. So um, we've let go three of the greatest motoring uh, brands uh, on the planet, which is Rolls-Royce, Bentley, and the Mini, of all things. Um, so we've got to really and truly recognise that um, if we're going to compete in the world, we've, um, yep, well, there's a lot of things that are virtual, and there's a lot of things that are online, but ultimately, as human beings, we're not virtual, we're physical. So there's still a massive demand for clothing, food, etc., and stuff like that. And as a nation, we have completely, I think, lost the plot even down to our agricultural sort of base, is very dependent on migrant labour coming in. Yeah, completely. To, uh, bring, yeah. uh, bring the crops in. Totally dependent. So, 
when I hear of sort of like fast Brexit and things like that, my concern is is that what's happened with Brexit now is that it's actually got caught up in the p- political ping pong game between the parties, and we need to recognise that. Um, if we miss the opportunity to get these things right, then the chances are, when we look across the world, we can see clearly that China has moved from an, a communist nation to being predominantly a capitalist nation to a certain extent. Their goods are, and their impact across the world in terms of manufacturing is our uh, on compare, we're potentially dependent upon them to finance the new um, nuclear power station. Yeah, how embarrassing is that? And I think that's where the problem really lies, is that we've got to step away from that sort of um, party political angle on this thing and to actually get real. I look to Japan and Germany as two examples that they have an active government department that always functions on the basis of looking at opportunity for their for their manufacturing businesses to export throughout the world and that is never really affected by any change of individual political party within those two countries um we're meant to have a special relationship with america i've got vast amount of fans <laughs> in america but this is a competitive world at the end of the day yeah plus and america is being run by a giant orange ape who you can't trust uh, and who changes his mind from uh, one minute to the next so let, well, let's not put uh, any eggs in that yeah. basket that's it. He's he's about competition. He's a he's from the business community himself, so mm-hmm. he he fully understands what commercial edge is all about. So I think what Britain really needs to do, we can't um, rattle the cage too much in terms of sort of uh, thinking that as a nation we can go out there and perhaps in the past. But that's what we've been persuaded uh, by by people who are wrapping themselves in the flag that yes. uh, you know we're we're still the same nation that um, rules the waves, that uh, no, has coloured the map pink. But we're not. We're, not a, not we're a relatively insignificant... And here's the thing that we, we just flat out refuse to accept, because it's too embarrassing, it's too enshriveling of our ego. We are an, uh, a, a tax uh, haven off the coast of Europe. That's pretty that's much right. what we do for a living. And all of the things that you do uh, recognise as being British, like you said, the car companies, uh, our, um, uh, the, the food that's uh, in our uh, kitchens, and uh, you know, all of the stuff that you think is Britishly British, we sold off. For yeah, uh, for quick cash in the short term, we uh, we um, we sold our long term future, and yeah. that cash, and we just blew that cash. What we blew it on, I've got absolutely no idea. Cocaine and prostitutes, yeah. I've got no clue <laughs> where all that money went, but it's gone. And now we're uh, and, and now we are um, we're, we're looking at a future where we'll we'll just be concentrating on being a tax haven. I mean, Theresa May's already said that threatening the EU with us uh, sitting off their shores, um, uh, you know, prostituting ourselves as a, a low tax haven, low, low, like we aren't that already. Yeah, Tony, I'm past a break. I've, I wasn't actually looking at the clock, um, but I've got to leave it there. But thanks for that. God, we're running light. So um, uh, this message from Matthew says, uh, Nick, I'm in Hull. And I can tell you that no one here cares about the city of culture either. And there certainly isn't anything going on. All I can think of as having this year is congestion on our streets because they've all been dug up. <laughs> on the other hand, Ben says, Hull being city of culture has tripled our tourism. Our art gallery has had over a million visitors this year and has revitalised our city centre. It's been amazing. Just because we're out in a limb up here doesn't mean to say people haven't come to visit. And you know what? I um, It's very easy for people, uh, for, um, metropolitan uh people like me to get sniffy about arts uh, outside of London but I just looked up what's going on in Hull uh, over the next three days and it came up with 134 events now some of these events are not necessarily one-offs or um, things that would uh, not have happened anyway but some of it looked quite interesting um, silk postcards of World War One, whispering sweet nothings, a tree sculpture. Okay, so the tr- the sculpture is probably there, uh, like all the time. 
A Christmas Countdown, I don't know what that is. A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Future, which is at uh, the Broderick Gallery. The Hornsey Art Society Exhibition um, looks uh, colourful. Turner and the Whale, as in, uh, the, you know, the painter, Turner, at the, Mar at the Hull Maritime Museum. Is that the thing that is uh, that looks like a, a, a ship sinking? I think it's a submarium. I went to um, the Hull's Submarium, which is an aquarium, but a submarium. I've got no idea what a submarium is, but apparently it's the world's only submarium, <laughs> whatever that is. I do know that they didn't have any fish. They had videos of fish, but no actual fish, not when I went. Then there's um, a, a cultural heritage from Beverly to Hull at the Beverly Art Gallery. There's uh, Carl Blossfeldt's Art Forms in Nature, looks like photography. Uh, Hull International Photography Festival at the Hip Gallery. Uh, Hull Portrait of a City at the Humber Street Gallery. The Hull Blitz Trail. Um, the Tool Appreciation Society. What? <laughs> the Tool Appreciation Society. Tremendous tool. Even Donald Trump uh, loves that. And uh, so on and so on and so on. No end of things to do. How can you not like that? So if you're in Hull and you haven't experienced any of that, then shame on you. Canterbury. Hello, Mark. Hello there, Nick. How you doing? Good, thanks. So, um, I just want to point out that um, I think the Tories have really sort of messed up um, Brexit in terms of its processing. Um, I generally believe... Um, you know, them having a them having an election really sort of um, you know uh, brought the process back in terms of what they were meant to do. So now you're in a stage where you know in about a year and a half time you're looking to come out of the European Union or go into a transitional phase, and those facts about how society will be is not very clear. And what politicians are doing is just sort of repeating the same old lines about this will be good, but without, you know, the facts from, you know, other leading financial organisations so differently. And I don't necessarily, I think you are some of your earlier um, speakers said the same thing, I don't think this is quite resonating with people that you are seeing inflation rising up and <clears throat> you are starting to sort of see those prices generally increase and you are changing from one economic um uh, one economic stability to one that's not so uh, stable, one that's so uncertain, and I don't think that's you know really been spoken about. And, and I also think you know there should be much more mobilisation in terms of sort of the people that voted against Brexit. Those forty-eight percent that people, those forty-eight percent that people don't want to talk about, should be allowed to say, well, you know, how about let's have another referendum where at least the facts are fully. Um, Discussed. Well, at least 100% of the people that are eligible to vote should be forced to vote. I mean, if they can do that in Australia, then they can do it here. I know it was a high turnout, but it wasn't high enough. I mean, yes, but democracy is about giving people, you know, a chance. I mean, it's about free will. Um, I yeah, but, you, but free will is... No, you, no, because this it, it's just too important. E what, either what every, everybody should have to vote, and, and I mean that as, uh, and that includes uh, general elections as well. Everybody should have yeah. to vote, otherwise there should be some sort of punishment. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, in terms of the vote itself, people don't sometimes uh, connect with politics. Um, you have different age groups, different demographics, and, you know, sometimes what, is important to one particular group is not the general uh, debate or you know that's going to connect with them so you have those variations but i think on such an important issue like brexit the way in which those arguments were sort of given out to the public i mean these were people who have studied or who have uh, understood exactly what the european union is and you know the nature of economics and, and they were just throwing out facts and like yeah but they weren't they weren't facts though they were it exactly, was they were throwing exactly out right. misinformation you know the usual uh the the, the usual oily suspects and their um, <laughs> dodgy russian backers it was just a, a a blizzard of misinformation mark uh but we're gonna have to leave it there
Uh, who knows what might happen between now and uh, 10 o'clock this evening? Wow, it uh, makes my uh, mind all of a boggle just thinking about it. <laughs> That's the sound I can hear between my ears in moments of quiet contemplation. So we'll regroup and uh, chew it up and spit it out then. All right.